Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Charles and you are watching Charles Salbox TV. So in today's video, I'm going to be focusing on the skill of counter-attacking. So how to set up counter-attacks. Now counter-attacking is a very important element of your arsenal and you will be trying to develop that within the gym. But in this video, I'm going to be focusing on the technical aspect as opposed to the more tactical one. That is something that I will touch on in another video. For the purpose of counter-attacking, what you're aiming to do is to open up your opponent and then when they are most vulnerable in that state, land your punch on the target area. So given that you've achieved the right conditions with your opponent tactically, I'm going to demonstrate how you can encourage your opponent to throw straight punch attacks from either the southpaw or orthodox position, and then from your orthodox stance, land your counter attacks. Right, let's get straight into it. Why do we want to develop the skill of counter attacking? So to begin with, with our opponent, we can assume that they will have a strong defense. So in order to break that defense, we don't want to force our way through. We want to encourage them to open up. We want to be on the path of least resistance. We do not always want to be forcing our way through um, for attacks. We don't want to be always using the most amount of power in punches. We don't always want to be utilizing our fastest speeds when throwing punches or even with footwork. We don't want to, you know, just be always in a position where we're having to use strength. That's not our best option when we are thinking about more intelligent boxing. When we're thinking about boxing in a more intelligent manner, what we want to do is establish vulnerability within our opponent and then exploit that particular weakness. So the first way in which we can achieve the counter-attack situation is to feint and then counter-attack. So by feinting, we want to encourage our opponent to throw an attack. Um, and then once they throw their attack, we counter-attack. And the second way that we can use counter-attacking is to engage within our opponent to draw them out, i.e. to give them the sense that we are vulnerable or open in some way in our defense. And then when they strike, counter-attack. So I'm going to demonstrate now how to counter-attack the jab from the orthodox opponent. Obviously, I'm in the orthodox stance myself. I'm in my boxing stance. Obviously, the heel aligns with the toe. My lead hand is in this position. My rear hand is in this position. The first thing that I want to do is establish um, some interaction with my opponent. So I'm going to throw stationary jabs that I want my opponent to catch. I want my opponent to feel comfortable that he's dealt with my attack by catching them. So I'm throwing my attacks to his guard, not to his head. So I want him to feel comfortable. That is the most important thing to begin this interaction with your opponent. So when I throw the jab, bah, okay? Remember, it's still a sturdy jab, but at the same time, it doesn't penetrate. Again, bah. Now, what happens is that in response to me throwing a jab, my opponent deals with my jab with his rear hand, but his lead hand is more than likely to be used to throw an attack back at me. So he will catch the jab, throw the jab back. Now this is a known response. This is often what we teach um, boxers to do in situations where they catch a jab with the backhand. So, by me throwing the jab, I'm encouraging him to do that specific thing that I know he's trained to do. So again, I throw the jab, bah, okay? Then when he throws his jab, I step back, okay, my lead foot is here, I take my head away from his punch, and then I throw my cross over his jab. When I throw the jab, immediately as my hand comes back, my foot goes back, ba. okay? My hand's in this position now. Now when I come forward, obviously after evading his jab, my head goes into the safety net of my hand as the right hand comes forward to attack my opponent. So again, ba, 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 okay? Ba, 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 
So just from the side, ba, 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 ba. Okay. Remember that first jab that you throw is intended for your opponent to catch and feel comfortable that he's dealt with your attack. So now I'm going to demonstrate how to encourage your orthodox opponent to throw their cross and then counterattack. So if I throw my hand here, okay, and then this hand is up, okay, in a very active manner, my opponent might feel that throwing their jab will come of no use because I might defend it. So that's one way to discourage the jab from your opponent. Now, coupling with that, you might want to encourage them to throw the rear hand. So what you do to actually encourage the rear hand after you've discouraged the lead hand is to throw the jab at your opponent and then lower the lead hand after throwing them. So that would then indicate to your opponent that you have no defense on the lane that they can throw their rear hand. So that will then give you that unique situation where you've established the setup for the rear hand counter. So where you throw your lead hand with your back hand more active, boom, and then lower your lead hand, okay, boom, you can expect the rear hand to come. Now, the action that you take after that is to throw your right hand out to the side, step over to the left with your left foot moving over, and then you will acquire this position more quicker than if you were to take your right hand over here, okay? Just through the conservation of momentum. And then what you want to do then is bring your right hand back as you bring your right foot over, then go for a hook, okay? In this situation, you return back to stance slightly off the line, okay? So I'll demonstrate that again. I've got my rear hand active, I've got my lead hand up, throw the jab, lower it, throw the jab, ba, ba, okay, just like that. Now, the reason why I come flat footed, because I'm shifting momentum over to this direction through the hook. Now, I don't want to turn too much. I've done a video on this why you actually don't pivot on the lead foot and you bring the weight back to the right foot in this manner so you can check that video out but back to this one so you bring the hook over there and this is where you've countered your opponent on their right side after throwing their right cross so again throw the lead hand out then drop it slightly again boom ba ba okay so the next thing i'm going to show you is how to utilize the counter attack for the southpaw jab. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do with your southpaw opponent to get them to throw their lead hand is to try to edge round more so over to their lead hand and keep touching their lead hand. Now, what you're doing is moving away from their backhand and if you're always touching the lead hand, they will try to counter with the lead hand especially when you're moving away from the rear hand. So you keep touching the lead hand and bringing it back, but you're waiting for them to throw the lead hand. Now your response to when they throw their lead hand is a contralateral step out here, and then you throw the cross straight down the center, okay, and then pivot out. So the idea is you first of all keep away from the rear hand, to cut down the angle to which they can attack on their lead hand. And you then wait for them to throw the lead hand by always gauging the distance between them. And then when they throw the lead hand, bah, okay, you throw the cross straight down the center while stepping behind their lead foot. As you retract the right hand, you can pivot out to the side. So a noteworthy point is that when you are touching the lead hand of the southpaw, you're not fully obstructing the lane for them to throw their jab. Okay, remember you touch, come back, touch, come back, whilst edging away from the rear hand, touch, come back. So you give them opportunity to use that lead hand. When it comes, bah, 
okay? Then you throw your cross, pivot out. Now okay. moving on to how to counter the southpaw rear hand, what we want to do again is encourage that rear hand through deception. So the first thing that we do is stay on the line, okay? We give them the idea that our body is well positioned for them to throw their rear hand or their lead hand, okay? So we don't move um, off to a position which disadvantages their rear hand. We stay on the line. And given the worst case scenario, we could edge over to the right, okay? But we don't want to move diagonally. We can edge over horizontally. Now, the second thing that we want to do um, whilst maintaining the um, stance along the line is to obstruct the lane for the lead hand for the southpaw. So we create a barrier for the lead hand, but we maintain distance because they might try to throw a hook and then once we've established that barrier, we can then edge over to the right slightly, okay? Now this will entice the southpaw to throw their rear hand. When they do, what we do is step over to the right, throw the lead hand over to the left, and that will take us to this position um, in the fastest way possible by the conservation laws of momentum. And then what we do, we throw the right hand whilst bringing the left foot across and the left hand back to guard. Bah, okay. Now that will ensure that our reaction is the most swiftest that we can possibly achieve. So I'll demonstrate that again. We're staying on the line. We've created that barrier for the lead hand of our southpaw opponent. And then when the rear hand comes from the southpaw, we step over and we throw our cross, okay? Back at the southpaw. That is our counter-attack situation achieved. Now I'll just demonstrate that from the side. So again, we create the barrier, okay? When we're ready, southpaw throws their cross, boom, bah, and then we throw our cross. Now I'm going to demonstrate all those particular punches in some shadow boxing and also hitting the bag so you guys can have a good perspective of how these look at different angles.
Okay guys, so we've come to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed the breakdown of how you can set up counter attacks. Now, obviously within this video, I did focus on the technical element of counter attacking, but I will be uploading a future video on how to set up counter attacks from more the tactical perspective and then you can see how the whole thing comes together for either tall fighters, short fighters, you know, aggressive fighters. Depending on who is your opponent, there'll be something there for you. Please share the video to anyone that you feel may benefit and of course hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay informed of any new videos that I'm dropping out on the channel. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them within the comment section. And until my next video, stay training, stay blessed, keep counter-attacking, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.